morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Um, at the end of today's lesson, I will have several handouts some people uh, have been asked to, to distribute to you. So after I close, uh, this young lady right here in the, in the uh, kind of like the reddish blouse, this gentleman here in a jacket, they'll have forms to give to you. Uh, and so basically everything I share and talk about, you'll get copies of it. Um, so, um, what, remember there's no wrong answers, there's no silly answers here. Any thoughts, what is love? Any ideas? Lily's really saying, what is truth? <laughs> what, just any thoughts, what is love? Caring, caring for others. Giving, or caring, or, caring. getting for others. Caring. Thank you, caring. thank you. No, I others. think she's saying caring. Caring, caring. Oh, caring, I'm sorry. Caring. Caring for others. For both? Good. Compromise. Caring for, thank you. Compromise. Compromise? Compromise meaning, can you say a little bit more? Uh, compromising on maybe things you like to do uh, that are not really very appropriate and so you have to think about the other person's feelings. Taking turns, thank you. Yeah. Compromise. Compromise. Caring, very powerful. Anything else? Self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice, yeah. Yes, yes sir. I get ready to see it. I think uh, love is an action, and, and it uh, elevates other people's needs and desires above your own. It's action. Love is patience. Hmm. Patience. I think love is also a noun. That's good. Yes. Yes, that is good. Yes, that is good. Feeling? Excuse me? Feeling? Or like an emotion? Okay. Who said that? Very good. Okay. Feeling. Thank you. We're going to get into that big time. No, I said feeling. Oh, feeling. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll need a microphone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You said it. I like that one too. No, but, but feeling. Well, it is a feeling, certainly, my God. Otherwise, you're asleep, for sure. It's mercy. Mercy? Yeah. Love is getting complicated, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Multifaceted, and it is. Forgiveness? And, oh, boy. <laughs> now, some of this may not be so much what love is, but what you observe. And I'm not going to separate them. They're all good. How about patience? We got that, we got that very good. Okay. There's many more, I'm sure. Thank you. We well, have all the wonderful grasp. Okay. Research has shown, oh, by the way, 80%, 85% of frame two occur. Um, everything I share with you either be, will be from research or from literature. If it is only for my opinion, it will be based on my observation, and I'll state that uh, sp uh, specifically. Research has shown that love heals emotionally as well as physically. People don't think of love that way. They, think, they don't think of it as healing. They think of it as an experience, a wonderful experience. But it's not only multifaceted, it's multidimensional and has healing aspects physically as well. Besides, number, uh, just stay with me, Kurt, the best you can. Hi, John. Thank you. Besides being the opposite of stress, the feeling of being loved is wired into our chemical makeup and even our brains. We are incredibly designed. Hmm. We are incredibly designed. Besides being the opposite of stress, the feeling of being loved is wired into our chemical makeup, even our brains. When we give and receive love, catch that, when we give, when we give and receive love, the brain releases a hormone called oxytocin, which helps us bond with others. It gives us the motivation, the energy, and desire to bond with others. 
and it protects us from the effects of stress and literally heals our hearts. It's also good for your brain. That's what they say literally. About, that's what they say about um, addicts that use cocaine in it from the molecular principle, and that's where our love hits, so that's where they become addicted to love because it hits that area and it releases the oxytocin and that's why people sometimes get upset. Exactly right, Ella. Exactly right. It's why it's such a powerfully addicting drug. Is um, that no oxytocin the same hormone when it's uh, released when a baby is uh, being procreated? Yes. Uh, well, if, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, uh, yes. Like the, the nurturing of the child, the caring and loving for the child? <clears throat> yeah, when the oh, woman is uh, get pregnant, the hormone, the first hormone that is released in I'm, the body is oxytocin. Yes. No? And when you go into labor, too. Well, that I didn't know. I'm not a woman. I never get baby. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's new. She would know. Two or three. But uh, yes, and when, uh, when you have a child in your arms and you're feeling the loving feelings towards your child, oxytocin. I bet you didn't know this. Husbands, when they start taking care of the child and give them the bottle and so on, they feel kind of, kind of special because they're, they're holding the child, oxytocin. So men can start nurturing. It's oxytocin. We're incredibly designed. Incredible. Thank you. Good point. Okay, Frank 3. Research on feeling loved. A Dr. Dean Ornish, you may have heard his name, he's written books on, on diet and so on, a physician, reports on research he conducted at Yale University that involved 119 men and 40 women undergoing coronary angiography. The angi uh, a coronary angiography really is using a special dye and, and x-rays to try to determine how efficient a person's circulation is. Those who felt the most loved and supported had substantially less blockages in their heart, artery, heart arteries than other subjects. And interesting. Frank Ford. In a related study, researchers looked at almost 10,000 married men and with no prior history of angina. Angina is where there's a pain around the heart area because circulation is limited and restricted of the arteries around the heart. And it causes shoulder, neck, jaw pain, and so on. My father had that, I know, I know firsthand. Those men had high levels of risk factors such as elevated cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, electrocardiogram abnormalities. In other words, abnormalities in the heart rhythm. Those who felt their wives did not show them love experienced almost twice as much angina as the first group who felt their wives did show them love. Notice the word, show them love. Uh, the next frame, frame five. While feeling loved appears to benefit our heart's health, giving love Giving love, giving love, seems to do the same for our aging process. You want to you want to stay young longer? Be loving to others. Wow. Never thought of that. Me either. No research. I until I did the research, I didn't know that. If you want to slow your own aging process down, be loving toward others. Well, it was, it was a lot of me. I was amazed. What are some ways quickly that we could be loving toward others? Any ideas and thoughts? It depends what the other person perceives as, as love. That's true. That's true. Sure. Any other thoughts? Just by doing unto others as you would yeah. want to be treated. Yeah. The, the golden rule. Yeah. Very good. Treating serving others, we want to be treated. Serving others. Serving. Serving. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you went many, many, basically, you described it. There's really some applicable uh, uh, thoughts there. It's ways of demonstrating caring. It's an action, uh, whatever, whatever it may be. But I wish uh, something could be a kind word. It used to be a kind word. This morning, my wife says something that I thought was really neat. She says, yesterday when I came home, you warmed the cockles of my heart because you made the bed. That seems so trivial, but it wasn't trivial to me. I appreciated it. I felt appreciated, valued, which is part of love. So little, little things. Little things. Okay. Next line. The results of a study of more than 700 elderly adults showed that the effects of aging were influenced more by what the participants contributed to their social support network than what they received from it. Well, there's many of these. But giving as well. Giving as well. I wasn't fully aware of that until I found this in the literature, which is based on research. It's sometimes, sometimes people can be for, more, feel more loved by giving than receiving. That's true. Yes. This may sound familiar to you. Give and it'll be given to you. Yep. Did you say, say scripture third, to give and to receive? Yeah. Better to give and to receive. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, This, this gives me hope and encourages me as a counselor to help others. There has been research down in the past, I mean, it's ongoing. When people oftentimes want to pull out of depression and despair, if they can make themselves start helping others, they're helped. When people just want to feel more loved and affirmed and valued, acts of kindness towards others. Yes. It's like it bounces back to you. Uh -huh. It's amazing. And frequently oxytocin is triggered, by the way. It's like a boomerang. You throw it out, it comes back to you. Not like a boomerang, same, yes, it's yes. It's not made from the same person or the same thing. It might be from somewhere totally different. Mm -hmm. But it always, always comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, thank you. In other words, the more love and support they gave, the more they benefited. Social ties with friends, family, workers, and community uh, that involve love and intimacy of any type also may help protect against infectious diseases. Could it be that feeling loved, often by giving it, increases your immunity. Researchers assessed subjects on 12 types of relationships, including relationships with spouse, parents, parents-in-law, children, and other close family members, neighbors, friends, co-workers, schoolmates, and members of various groups. Our next frame, number seven. They scored a point for each type of relationship if they spoke to a person in that category at least once every two weeks. While almost all the people who were experimentally exposed to a cold virus were, were infected, not everyone developed the signs and symptoms of a cold. The participants who reported only one to three types of relationships had more than four times the risk of developing a cold than those reporting six or more types of relationships. This is talking about colds and viruses, but other research has found the risk of heart disease and cancer is significantly lessened, the risk of it significantly, significantly lessened by, by people who have positive relationships, feel loved. Yes, ma'am. That article we were looking at this morning where it says that uh, in the last 20 years, people spend 50% less time than they used to 
interacting with other people. And a, a lot of it, I think, is because of electronics, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you're having that 50% less interaction, is it, an, what you're saying there, is it not amazing that we're such a sick society, physically and emotionally? Yeah. Because people are so disconnected, because they are not spending time with one another. What I'm hearing, thank you, honey. Those who don't know, it's my wife. I'm sorry. That's right. I, told her, I told her, honey, I better tell you, she's my wife. <laughs> no one's stories go out here. They have something going. Yes, for almost a half a century, they have something going. But it's okay. Side note there. Uh, to, uh, to your response to your statement, I thank you very much. Uh, I think as a, as a contrib definitely a contributing factor to much of the lack of communication and dysfunctional behaviors we see in society at an accelerating rate, I think is, is a, a contributing factor. Just a side note, we, were, we went out Friday to have supper. And we were sitting there talking, we're talking about summer vacation and what we're going to do. And I was just drawn to this family that were just sitting to the side of us. There were five of them, three boys and the mom and dad. And, it, it, you know, it's, it's well, I'll just tell you where it was. We went to the Longhorn Steakhouse. And you know to feed that many people at that restaurant, that family came out with at least $120, at least, from just my observation. They did not speak to each other at all. They were all sitting around. The mother said something every once in a while, but they all had their little devices. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I said, when are people going to wake up? When are they going to make the kids leave the stuff in the car? And when are they going to talk to each other? Well, I just not you, made a, you made a good point. Yes, stuff. honey, thank you. You made a good point. I want to reinforce something here. I want to reinforce something here. Um, technology is great. It's awesome. But it can be, it can run amok when we put it in in place of human relationship and human contact. That can, can't be replaced. And bottom line is why I hear you saying thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, and I just really want to confirm, you know, what you're saying, um, being of this generation. Um, it, it is difficult to form that intimate bond or that closeness with either a significant other or you wanting to establish a relationship with someone or even communication with friends when everybody just wants to, to text or email and so forth. And so I made a conscious decision and I know many of my friends were not very happy about it, but I said, you know what? If you want to talk to me, if you want to reach me, can you just pick up the phone and call me and let's just talk? Because I cannot have a full conversation via text anymore. Um, things can be said and misconstrued via text, mm -hmm. and it doesn't come across in the way that I would like it to. So I that. definitely no said, let's let's communicate, let's talk, let's go back to the old school ways yeah. of, of communicating because this is just not working. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, for your, that was a good point. Uh, it's funny. Uh, people have asked me. People have asked me to counsel uh, via internet, and I. I uh, uh, the, you know, for, for those for those of my counselors that are wondering, wait a minute, is it ethical? Well, as of as of my knowledge, at this point, it takes a board of examiners. Does not have any guidelines on that. It's too new. Personally, I think it'll take a court case for them to design specific guidelines. But there is an issue for ethics for us confidentiality. Anyway, that communicating over the internet seems so dry, impersonal, detached. Even the telephone, which is better, because you can hear a voice, you get the extra verbals, but only to a point. Nothing takes the place of actually being in person, yes, really, makes it be. So think about relationships when I'm talking about counseling. Who else had your hand up? Yes. Um, I've uh, uh, done this with my son because he's very into technology and stuff, that we have our spent movie time. It's like a time for us, time to look away to all these electronics, and it's just, 
time for us. You know, I don't take that knowledge totally away from him, but I do make that interaction time for us. And and about the this stuff with the counseling through the computer, um, you know, I sponsor a lot of people and uh, I mean, I, I, I even tell them I, I don't like even doing it on the phone because I can see their body language and that says a lot. It you does. Know, whether they're lying to you. Because on the phone, you could be like, oh yeah, I'm fine, you know, and they're totally messed up. Mm -hmm. True. No. Okay. True, true, true. You're right. Uh, just real quick, and I want to get back and try. Thank you. Good point. According to one theorist, can't recall the name, sorry, uh, or some research, 85% of communication is nonverbal. Mm -hmm. So it's really disadvantaged uh, trying to. I just read recently some research that many times people can feel loved with the benefits of feeling loved just by being in the presence, close proximity of another person. Mm -hmm. Just That's being there. Me. That's why people would tell me uh, one time they were, were talking about grieving a, a, a close loss, a loss, and somebody you don't always know what to say. Don't worry, just be there. That can be powerful. I've had them tell me that, people that are in the, the grieving pro process themselves. Interesting. Thank you for your, your wonderful comments. Um, I'm going to go a little quicker. But not too quick, though, because really, I think the whole class is more of a, of a, of a, a learning experience that people uh, participate. Anyway, uh, number eight, Dean Schrock, PhD, author of Why Love Heals, cites scientific proof that love heals. Dr. Schrock served as a director of mind-body medicine for 40 cancer centers. He found that his patients live much longer than those receiving only conventional medical care. Quick side note, don't have it here, is they did some research and physicians that sat down with critically ill patients that sat down with them and used eye contact, listened to them, responded in such a way that they were genuinely concerned about them. They didn't see them as the only saw them as a person. The recovery rate, recovery rate was much more rapid. The nose just went through like an assembly line. And I think if this ever gets a medical school, it will definitely be a, a positive force and influence on the, med on the medical practice. I hope, I hope they do. Okay. Much of the surprise, his research showed that what made the difference of his patients was not the programs or teachings, it was that they felt loved and cared for by him. Number nine, according to medical research, when you feel loved, nurtured, cared for, supported, and intimate, you are much more likely to be happier and healthier. Can I, can I that thing? Oh, please, yes. Thank you. You know, recently going through the divorce and being abandoned, eventually I found uh, an apartment. And it was right by the new library in McAllen, beautiful area. The landlord seemed really nice. They called me mom and dad, and they showed me the one next to the apartment that was available because they said the lady didn't really like to show it. New carpet, dishwasher, washer, washer, and at a very low price. So I was like, wow, oh, you know, it's heaven after spending so long being in a women's shelter and not paying anyone else. And, um, well, when it came the day to get in, and I couldn't go back now because somebody else, you know, somebody in got in, it was infested with cockroaches in the kitchen. Just infested, and they had already sprayed, and we ended up living there three weeks. They ended up getting some positive back, but in those three weeks, they sprayed five times. I was telling them, no one, you're spraying too much, you know, and it just, you know, it's not, it's not working, it's not healthy. Well, finally I said, maybe let's try someone else. Let me do the research and I'll find an expert and we'll split the cost. And they said, okay. And so, <laughs> I, I won't say the name of the company, but they came in and I had used them years ago and they, they were great. Not for an infestation, but just for regular, well, so they came in 
And so now we have like the special vacuum that goes in the walls and it uses like UV rays or something like that, plus the, the regular powder. This is for an infestation. So we get home that night because I was at work when he sprayed. And not only were the cockroaches in the kitchen now, they were all over the whole apartment and they weren't dying. They were like more alive. They had come out of the walls. It scared them out of the walls. And it wasn't killing them. They're immune. Now before I had moved in, though, the Lord had given me a dream that I might not want to go there, but I had already made a decision and I didn't know, and I had spent so long finding an apartment and my time was up, so I was like, is that really God? Is it the devil mocking me? What? So I had moved in. So it just wasn't the Lord's will for us to be there. But, you know, you talk about conventional medicine, you could take all the right medicines and it might not work. Oh, <laughs> you know, li listen, crazy. listen, um, <laughs> yes, well, you just said something there, thank you. Um, I just, I just heard something there. Um, but this is off topic. I will cover, I'll address a thought that I just had now, more in Sunday after next. Um, but when people have faith in the doctor or the medicine, they heal quicker. Mm -hmm. If they believe the medicine will help, the medicine works more effectively. Research. Yeah. If they believe the physician will have the answer but it will help them more, rather than being skeptical and distrusting, mm -hmm. they're going to heal quicker. Research. Very, very, very interesting. Yeah, they've been given sugar pills to people and they've gotten better. Just because they're doing that pill. <coughs> there's something called, thank you, there's something called a placebo. And many times placebos can help significantly with reducing disease. What the heck, where are I going to buy placebo? Uh, placebo simply means a sugar pill, but the person doesn't know, they think it's a medicine. They get better. I'm going to say something that, that you won't have any clue all of what I'm alluding to because I've researched stuff for months. But let me just tell you, we are fearfully, wonderfully made. We are incredible creations. We're not an afterthought by any means. And the mind, the human brain, is incredibly powerful. I'll kind of leave it at that for now, but Sunday up the next, we'll get more into that. The set next time you talk about something called brain plasticity. This is a living organism, not just because it's a blood flow and electro, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, electrical energy and cells and so on and hormones and chemicals, etc. It changes. Yeah. Your brain changes. It can grow or diminish based on your life experiences. Okay, this is way off the subject, but I'll get back in a minute. <laughs> Okay. They found that children in orphanages, no, it does tie in, the children research, children in orphanages that didn't have the caretaking, the love, the nurturing, the attentiveness, the acts of affirmation, mm -hmm. their parts of their brains were smaller. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to say medulla, I could be wrong on that. But part of the brain was reduced in size. These same children, when they were adopted and began to feel the love and the affirmation and the nurturing that God designed them to have, their, their brains developed quicker and their brains caught up in size. Research, folks. We'll talk about that in session. It's amazing. Brain plasticity. And God is good news. Even at my age, you still got brain plasticity. But it's incredibly rapid, fast, and marvelously efficient yeah. in a child, and, and, and incredibly so with an infant. But there's hope for me too. That means, to a, to, a, to a small degree, when you all leave here, your brains will be different than when you came in. Fact, neurological research. When you leave this room, your brains will be different than they were when you walked in. Because what you're learning and hearing and remembering, you're developing new neural pathways. Physiological changes that can be mapped and observed in, 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 uh, in, in cerebral x-rays. They call it MRI. It's magnetic resonant imaging. Like x-ray the brain. They can see it. And if you start to practice some of these things, those neural pathways become stronger and your brain plasticity accelerates even more. And you begin to change as a person by what you say, you do, you think, and you feel. But that's coming. But I, I had to throw that in because it's exciting stuff.
Come in. Exciting. Doctor, do I, I chased rabbits. I didn't warn you about that. <laughs> Thank you, Aldo. That is excellent. Now you're getting into Sunday up for next. Thank you. This is something called mental rehearsal. It's also been termed visual behavior rehearsal. It started um, uh, in NASA research. Now they use it presently, actively, uh, in, the, uh, in the Olympics, Olympic athletes. Um, it's incredible. You remember the power of the human brain? It's amazing. But through what they see, what they perceive, your brain can be changing. Who you are can be changing, like your perspective and what you entertain and what you see in your mind. But also, with athletes, they, the gym is one example, they, in their mind, run their minds through a routine, and they've done research on this. And the Athletes who did the gymnastic routine after they mentally rehearsed it were significantly more of proficient than those who didn't. Because see, part of your brain can think it's really happening. It's amazing. So, this sounds well, it's kind of interesting. Well, think of this. It works the negative too. So can trauma be healed? Yes, yes it can yes. be healed. Yes. It, it certainly can. Shoes. Brain plasticity guarantees it. <clears throat> okay. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, either way you're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think a man might have known something, you know? Okay, I mean, I'm being facetious here. Okay, according to research, you have a much lower risk of getting sick, and if you do, a much greater chance of surviving. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to make sense of that myself. Is that, okay. is that that's following that's, the first that's one? That's a whoops. No, that, no, no. According to research, you have much lower risk of getting sick. And if you do, and much, oh, yes, I'm sorry. That's good. Okay. It's, connect, it's connected to when feel of the here, nurture. You know, it's, it's good, it's good, yeah. Okay. Okay, it's not a whoops. Okay. It has been found that people who attend church regularly live several years longer. Research fact. This could be one of the reasons. Stress, number 10, stress sends your cells messages of attack. Now, we're going to talk stress now. Stress is big. Now, to save time, I'll just kind of share with you that stress can be good. It can motivate us to accomplish goals. Um, for several weeks, I felt stress because I was preparing a PowerPoint and a presentation for a couple of classes at UTPA. I wanted to do a good job. But I was under stress because of the deadline. So I spent probably eight weeks preparing for this and doing research. Well, but it motivated me to do the PowerPoint, which you may be able to see next week, and do the research behind it. So that was good stress. Because it stopped after I gave the presentation. But then there's a chronic stress and a negative stress that can be quite the opposite. It's not good. It's like a cancer. It accomplishes nothing, but it continues to devour you. And that's what this is going to, going to touch on. Attack. Uh, this attack constricts your energy, 
It puts you in negative stress mode, causing you to make unhealthy choices and limit yourself. This is severe chronic stress. In time, it damages your physical and mental health. But love creates relaxation and space for healing. Love sends your cells a message to repair, rejuvenate, and create. You're wired to heal mentally and physically, and love is a vehicle for much healing. Real quick, but I'm getting ahead in, in future lessons, though. If stress is severe enough, it creates something called cortisol. This is a hormone created by stress, and it was designed to get us to act quickly, uh, have more strength, power, quicker thought, more endurance in emergency. So we need that. If I'm crossing a street and I see a car coming, my cortical, cortisol is going to kick in, and I'm going to jump quicker and faster than I ever could in my life. But when it's ongoing because of the rumination that's continuing, then it has a reverse effect, and this is what I was getting to. Cortisol that does not decrease in a timely manner destroys your brain. It will destroy your brain. Chronic stress, unabated chronic stress, destroys your brain. Love prevents that. And can heal it. Amazing. Uh, <coughs> yes, yes. Is stress emotional? You people have wonderful questions. It's not just emotional, it's physical, too. Oh, well, it, it, you're right. You're, you're both right. You both are right. We have thoughts. Thoughts lead to feelings. Feelings lead to uh, physical manifestations. Our thoughts, if they're, let's say, in love, we feel love, secure, confident, happy, we increase our lifespan. Not only will it decrease your chances of cancer and heart disease, it will help you heal more rapidly from them, there's been research, I don't hear, sorry folks, in, in, in medical schools, in medical, teaching medical schools, they have found that when people were able to change their thinking and forgive areas where they had a great deal of animosity, anger, hate, resentment, and they're able to forgive, they had what they referred to as seemingly miraculous recoveries because the brain and the body is that powerful. That's right out of medical school research. That blew me away too. I gave it to a graduate class in UTBA. You know, yeah, is that powerful? Is that powerful? Where are we now? Okay, number 11, very quickly, I'm going to get this again. I love this. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I think it's so apropos. Generally speaking, it's so apropos for, for understanding the people. Should start from the bottom up, but I did it right. Which of oh. Okay. Feeling of physical safety? Yes. Feeling of physical safety? That is person, the people's as a general rule, as a general rule, the most important need people have is physical safety. It's kind of like if you feel your life threatened, you're not worried about anything else. That's that precedent. But then the next will be feeling emotionally safe. They use it now from now on, it's like a general rule of thumb. Feeling emotionally safe, that's next in importance. When we feel physically safe and we feel emotionally safe, then we need to feel loved. And when you feel a sense of belonging, often considered on the, on the same, in the same area, or the same level, feeling of love and belonging. And then self-esteem. And then something called self-actualization, 
which is having purpose and meaning, realizing personal potential, self-fulfilling it. Have a meaning and purpose in life. But I put this in there because in the very center, feeling loved and feeling a sense of belonging, it's hard to go past that if you don't feel that. Sometimes, I think especially teens and young, very young people, but uh, they often give precedent to belonging and feeling, lo feeling loved more than physical and emotional safety. And as we get into some dangerous areas like peer pressure, etc. But nevertheless, those are powerful. Number 12. Five ways of saying I love you. Oh, I've got to stop. I'd like to read something to you. Okay, five ways of saying I love you. Saying, saying, words. A difference of words. A husband looking through the paper came upon a study that said women use more words than men. It's actually true. <laughs> Twice as many about, approximately. It read, men use about 15,000 words per day, but women use 30,000. That's actually, that is research. Excited to prove to his wife they have been right all along when he accused her of talking too much, be sure to the study results. The wife thought for a while, then finally she said to her husband, it's because we have to repeat everything we say. <laughs> the husband said, what? <laughs> that could be a true story. I'm no exception. Five ways of saying I love you. Okay, there's words of affirmation. Verbally assuring someone that they are cherished or valued. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Second is quality time, activities and being together in enjoyable endeavors. Next is receiving gifts, giving someone something as a token of your caring. Then acts of service, doing things for others that communicate caring. And a physical touch. This can break down barriers and communicate, communicate caring and loving. There are several things I wanted to read today. I won't have time, but again, you will have copies of everything. Uh, but I'm going to go as quick as I can now in the next few minutes. Because there are some things I would like to read. Here. What is love? Definition. And you will have copies of this. Love is putting the other person before yourself. So I mentioned that. Love is trying to meet the other person's needs as well as your own. Love is wanting another to feel loved by you. Love is wanting to feel cherished by another. Number 15, words of affirmation. These are ways of feeling loved. Words of affirmation such as, I feel loved when you pay attention to me. I love it when you hear what I'm saying and feeling. I love how you're so responsible, I feel like I can count on you. Just I love you. I really appreciate you doing that for me. It makes me feel loved. Or you warm the cockles of my heart because you made the bed. <laughs> I felt appreciated value as part of love. You have to understand the Say all you want. You have to understand the cockles of the heart thing because that, that's a that goes way back to when our our daughters were little ones. You know, we, they, it goes back too far, but everybody says, "Why would you say that?" But he understood what I was. <laughs> I'm going to read some things here to you quickly here. Um, we're almost out of time. So the rest of I was going to cover with you is called the five love languages. Languages. We can get information. Uh, an author by the name of Dr. Yes, Dr. Chapman. Yeah. He's written several books now. The Five Languages for Adults, yeah. the Five Low Languages for Teenagers. Teens, thank you. For children, for couples, the Five Languages on Dating. I mean, all kinds. He's a prolific author. But the original one, just the Five Low Languages. Um, 
covers it's very comprehensive. Um, I recommend it. You get a CD for those that are like me that they listen by ear because they do a lot of driving in the car because they're busy. Whatever you, whatever you wish to do it. Um, so I'm going to read some things to you very quickly. And uh, I was going to get to these, but for lack of time, I'm jumping ahead. Love is therapy. Nothing heals, this is all based on, on, on the literature of experts and research. Nothing feels better emotionally, biochemically, physically, or mentally than love. Some people are happier and healthier giving love, while others need to be loved to remain healthy. In fact, feeling love sets forth a complex series of events within our bodies that generally bring about better health, as I mentioned before. A distinction must be made between falling in love and being in love, or feeling love in general. Simply defined, falling in love is part of the initial stage of a relationship in which you feel strong, passionate feelings of attraction, both emotionally and physically, to another person. If we are fortunate, this stage leads to being in love, a deeper devotion and affection which we develop and deepen over time. We can feel love for someone who is not a romantic partner. In fact, we more often feel love without being in love. We frequently extend the more general kind of love to relatives, friends, even pets. Mm. I'm not a dog and cat person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but actually, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's my disadvantage because Research has shown that having pets, I just read a little while ago that just a few minutes of petting, of petting your pet can be powerful, mm -hmm. even triggering oxytocin. That's true, because mm -hmm. whenever I have my cat, I not only, I mean, by law, because, I mean, most of you know, you don't know, you don't know, but anyways, I'm going to tell you. Because I am a disabled person, by law, not only did I get Morris, my cat, for this reason but I have to be protected and I have to have an animal not only for therapy but uh, for also protection but anyways uh, fast forwarding a little bit it is true that when you at least spend one or two minutes of just playing with him and loving on him and petting him you do feel you, you, you know you do feel a release and it's not to the point to where oh my god you Literally, and if I may say, you want to go out with him because you can't because he's an animal. <laughs> but I'm saying, but I'm saying like that, that what he's talking about. Like a warm, loving feeling. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, perfect. Which is what personally I Thank need. <laughs> no, no, thanks. Thank I'm you. sorry, I don't. No, that's awesome. Thank that's you. awesome. Thank that's you. awesome. Thank that's you. awesome. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's just we writing. No, thank you very much. Numerous studies prove that love does indeed improve our health. These studies look at love not only in the context of male-female primary relationships, such as marriage, but also in the context of a person's general social support and connection to others. We've talked about this. Much of this is reinforcing, I know that. While feeling loved appears to benefit our heart's health, giving love seems to do the same for our age process I mentioned earlier as well. One more thing I'd like to read here. Let's see here. This is from an article based on research. Live longer by appreciating your own good heart. Paying attention to your own acts of kindness. Paying attention to your own acts of kindness, such as opening doors for strangers, can lengthen your life. You're not going to believe this, folks. I didn't make it up can lengthen your life by as much as eight years or more, studies suggest. Turns out, the good feeling that comes from giving others a helping hand cuts your production of the damaging stress hormone cortisol by up to half. This is powerful medicine, and it doesn't need to take a lot of your time, says Dr. Drew Orton, MD, a plastic surgeon at UCLA School of Medicine. Quote, I volunteer for Smile Train, which teaches doctors, in poor, teaches doctors in poor countries how to repair children's cleft palates, cleft lips, and palates, and has truly changed my life. Acts of kindness can help you feel more loved, and you get all the benefits of it. 
And that's, that's something that's something that we all have access to. Yes, yes. Just real quick, I belong to an organization called Infinite Love, and we do randomized. I belong to an organization called Infinite Love, Infinite Love. and we do randomized oh. kindness for people homeless. So it's Tuesday and Friday, and they do they they talk about all about random acts of kindness, and it's really what you're saying. It just feels really good to see the homeless people in this whole park when you see them. They are so appreciative that you're doing that with them. And it's good that we're doing that for them. It, it also benefits you, and you feel really good from doing that. Thank you. Let me, let me reiterate that. I think it's very important we just shared. You're in, our, you're in a, a program that helps people in essential, I think, physically, and physically safe for sure. Like, but their needs, their basic needs are being met. It's important, and you feel good about that. Yes. Elder, you or anybody else, what do you think is, was triggered her brain when she felt good about helping others? Help, help please. Oxytocin. Oxytocin. And in a sense, Elda, you just extended your extending your life and improving your health. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to close. But you're getting copies of everything. Please, uh, I get a copy. This gentleman here, he's passing out the entire PowerPoint. I covered probably less than half. But I covered what I wanted to today, the research. The rest is in the five love languages. <clears throat> now, next week, we're going to talk about play therapy. But catch this. The general theme of next Sunday's teaching will be play therapy with children, though it can be done with teens and adults too for that matter. And it breaks down barriers, increases communication, it increases trust, uh, it increases uh, like emotional uh, uh, communication, influence parents, grandparents, people who hope to be parents someday. But we're all going to get into brain plasticity, which I think is fascinating, and that can apply to counselors and every other person, period. Every person on the, on the planet. Knowing about this and how to get brain plasticity to work for you is very powerful. I want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you so much. Someone had a question? Yes. I, I just read something recently. It said a key to happiness and happiness is uh, being present and be kinder than you need to be. I like that. Say it again, please, loud. A key so, to it, happiness and health. Be kinder than you need to be. Yes. Put that a little extra step. I was at HEB. This lady was by herself. She dropped her groceries. Some of the containers broke. Glass all over the place. I could have walked by and said to myself, okay, Someone from Australia will come out to help her, she'll be okay. But I figured, no, if I were her, I'd want me to help. Remember the, 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 the golden rule? So I stopped what I was doing. I got some in a trunk of a car to pick up the glass. I'll just pick up the glass, picking it up. You know, whatever it was, I forget, vinegar, where it was holding my hand, it doesn't matter. I was picking it all up. She was so appreciative of it. And I felt good. I felt good in the process. Being kinder than you have to be. And so I feel good. And I'm just telling you, we all can do that. That's my point. Any of us can do that. Someone else had a question? Yes. For us that are, come from dysfunctional families and we don't have that loving, nurturing um, environment, can we get find that in God, even though he's not a, you know, he's not right here physically? Um, can we still have that? You know, get that benefit? Unequivocally, yes. With lots of stars and flashes. Uh -huh. Fireworks. Big time. Big time. Many people don't know it, though. And so they miss out terribly. So it's a shame. Um, yeah, I can go on, but I'm out of time. The good point, we can. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I just yes, please. Creating, creating new neural pathways. How do you do that? Okay. Good question. You'll learn more about that next two Sundays. Okay. I jumped the gun. I'll let the cat out of the bag just real quick. Um, I mean, is it based on your experiences? Or what you, yes. The new things you focus on? Yes. So if you're trying to you know, forget your past and move forward, you just need to focus. It's fascinating, dear brother. It's fascinating. 
See, your brain, I'm sorry, uh, you all can leave if you need to understand, but those who want to hang in, I'll, I'll try to, uh, for a few minutes, I'll share. Your brain is made up of several nerve, in fact, it's millions. As far as cells, I think there are many cells in your brain as there are in the galaxy, maybe more. I think. A lot. Maybe it's, maybe it's the number of atoms that your brain's made up. Whatever it is, 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 is complex. But anyway, you have several neural pathways. And um, your, what you learn, your emotions, your perceptions, your, um, your thoughts, you're developing neural pathways. You might call them memories with emotions. It can be good or bad. Addiction, trauma, feeling loved. I hope you don't mind me diverting a little bit here. When I helped that lady at HEB, I remember it clearly and how I felt. So I got a neural pathway there. What is it? Yeah. My brain was changed doing that. Because I remember. So it's there. Physiologically. And for like when children are learning ABCs or learning to talk, they're developing languages of little neural pathways oh. are developing. Thank you. Yeah. They did some research. And they compared children that had not learned to read yet and those that learn to read, and they can see the difference in their brains. Their magnetic resonance. Isn't that amazing? Their brains are changed because they're to read. Anyway, yeah. So, real quick. So, what you entertain, what you nourish, what you feed, but what you dwell on, what you focus on, those neural pathways become stronger. And maybe even begin use visualization, powerful. Branches off. So it becomes more extensive and deeper. Broader and deeper. More breath, more depth, that nerve pathway by entertaining it. Then the others that you, by doing this, you're making the opposite emotional memory, thoughts, and feelings diminish because you're not feeding that. So that can become weaker, this can become stronger. 12 step, we've been doing this for years. So I think in the 1950s, was it? Sig or is it early Sigma? Remember when it began, 12 step? 1937. Ooh, that early? Oh. Okay. Anyway. Um, but they've been doing it for a long time. They dwell on the positive aspects, constructive thoughts, positive thoughts, they make them stronger. And by abstaining with the drug, they're making this weaker. And it can change your life. But this, this is, it's a principle. Yes. yes. It does, it does, it does, it does. And you're touching upon, thank you, you're touching upon a supernatural aspect where we have by, by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. Bottom line. Uh, but in the natural, he does such a beautiful job so that they, they, they should work together. They should, well, they do. They do. Um, and you're sharing in part two, I believe, part of your motivation for doing these things. But real quick, if you come across someone someday that faith is not that strong, then you can share that I said this, fake it till you make it. Yes, amen. amen. That means, if I act kind to someone and make myself fake it, yes. sorry, sorry about the term, but I can't think of a better one, <laughs> to act kind and do nice for them, even in my heart I don't feel like it, then eventually I begin to feel like it. Yeah. And that's actually scriptural, by the way. It doesn't take a feel at first. <laughs>
was good. Right. Mm -hmm. You come so far. It's amazing. Love your enemies. <laughs> you see, it's your benefit, not just theirs. Right. It's both. Two way. Thank you. I'm sorry. Doing that Yes. And actually, too, for the counselors out there, that's behavioral therapy. Cognitive is you start thinking, thinking it first and change your behavior. Most people do. Therapists do both. Well, you know, I found that last year, you know, you're talking about those brain pathways and things that we think that are, you know, we, we don't remember anymore. Last year I decided to learn French. And I had French 50 years ago in high school. And so, you know, I was struggling, but all of a sudden I got into it. And then out of the blue, these words would pop up. And it was what I learned in mm -hmm. high school year French at, uh, 50 years ago. The neural pathways that were developed. The neural pathways were still there. And just so it, it's just, just amazing. I was just floored because I come across these words would pop up and I'd say, where did that come from? Well, it came from high school learning. Her pathways are developed in high school. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It, it, it's amazing what you say about fake it and then it's gone. Because uh, five years ago, I was living in Wisconsin. My husband was here. And my son, you know, he was in elementary at that time. He was like, oh, I am depressed, mommy. I am miss my daddy so much. And I, told, and I, was, I didn't know this, okay, but I am a mom. I am caring, <laughs> of course. you know, and I say, okay, solution, 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 okay, okay, let's pretend that we are happy, let's, some music, let's dance, and pretend you're happy, and I pretending with you, when they start laughing on the floor, laughing, laughing for hours. That is so cool, but it gets, <laughs> it gets, it gets thank you, it gets back, it gets back to the power of, 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 of the, the, the the workings, the mechanism of, of the human brain. There's been some research. Folks, we all have stressful days, let's be honest. Smile, it reduces your stress, even in your body. Saying thank you, reduces your stress. <laughs> yes, research. Being polite reduces your stress, even if you don't feel like it. Smile. Now, you don't want to do this because you think you'll think. You think, I'm not sure, you'll feel nuts. Mm -hmm. But just simply grin for 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> in 60 seconds, your brain chemistry is going to change and the feel-good hormones begin to trigger in. It follows your reaction. <laughs> Amazing okay, stuff. Got it. I, I, do that in the Fact. On, I do that in the morning on the way to work in the car, especially when I don't feel like going to work. And then, you, you, you know, just... Who's going to see you in the car? If they do, they think you're listening to music or whatever. <laughs> and, and you would be surprised. You feel a lot better when you get out of the car and go into the, you know. It's funny. Sometimes I, 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 I go through, this is another whole lesson, but it's something called going through what you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. Got to have a surprise with people. It's nothing to do to God. But you go, but in research, you found by being thankful for things and visualizing and repeating your mind what you're thankful for, your brain chemistry changes. It has a positive impact on your entire physiolo physiology. Uh -huh. And positive neural pathways. Writing a gratitude list. Well, I do that every morning on the way to work. Yeah. But I'm thinking of putting a, 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 a faux of Bluetooth on my ear so people see me talking. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think only I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, put an ear plug in or something, they'll think I'm talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. But uh, no. It's very really helpful to me. I do the way to work. Uh, Dr. Dudner, one thing I realized is that uh, at Pan Am, at the rec center, right across uh, between the rec center and the student parking lot, they put a, a school crossing guard, they put a, an officer there now to direct the traffic and to safely cross the, the students from one side of the parking lot over to the rec center because there was an accident involving a cyclist who didn't yield and he went through the pedestrian crosswalk and there was a driver on, uh, you know, uh, texting. So he, he hit him, it was a pretty bad accident. But they have a, a, a crossing guard now who stands there all day long okay. in the heat. And uh, me coming from a law enforcement background and, and working with school security as well, I know what it's like to direct traffic for hours, and I know what it's like to be out in the sun just there in, in, in uniform. Uh, and I just realized that right now, I, I know what they go through. So every time I pass through there, that I'm walking over to the, uh, 
to the gym, I always tell the officer, thank you, you know, for holding up the stop sign and, and, and holding up the traffic gate, keeping us safe. But I never thought about it. I never thought that it was therapeutic or it was really it's therapeutic for you, but it's helpful for him too. So I just realized people that people feel appreciative. They feel uh, my fellow classmates would look like, well, that's his job. You don't need to tell him thank you. I mean, you know, he's going to do it for the next person and the next person. I go, yeah, but still, yeah, well, that's the kindness of power. They don't work, have but to. it takes a lot to be out there. Because I know when I would do it, I would, I would tell. The, you know, the supervisor, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do this all day. It's not. Forget it. You know? <laughs> well, you, you, you can empathize because you put yourself in his shoes. But uh, I was very, the little things have done make a big difference. Thank you. I'm going to close anyway. So anybody that wishes uh, to attend upon a grace, please, please feel free. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you next week, 9 o'clock. And it's going to be fun.